Yeah, welcome back to the show. It's AM Club on MX24 TV, home of fun, fearless, and factual programming. My name is Godwin Nambu. Every year on June 7, the world celebrates Food Safety Day. Now, there are a group of people, including myself, who have decided that whether we are lactose intolerant or whether contumely is not good for us or whether okra is not good for us or we will eat it. We don't care. We are training our stomach to accept anything and everything. But I've heard it's not good. And we have to deal with it. So um, according to the WHO, um, over 600 million people suffer from foodborne diseases every year. And to help us, help us, including people like me, to practice the right food um, hygiene, is Selena Awin Bissa Aganda. She's a nutritionist. Did I get it right? Yes. See, I mentioned it so effortlessly. You did. Bissa so let me stick to Selena. Yeah, okay. I think that, sh that will help. Welcome. Thank you. Okay. First of all, what do you say to people like me who don't really care about, um, should I really care about what I eat? I mean, food is food. I mean, I'm not talking about the hygienic part of yeah. it, but like, if it's not good for my stomach, why shouldn't I eat it? Yeah, I think there are a lot of people out there, it's not only you, mm -hmm. right, who really don't care about what they eat. And when you start telling them, you know what, be careful what you take in because you are like what you eat, mm -hmm. so it's like what you consume. If you see yourself getting bigger in the next five years, it's probably because you are consuming a lot of things and they've been stored and they've now piled up and that's why you are seeing yourself looking all fluffy and you don't really want to look like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's. I think I'd say it ha it's a way of saying people have to be like self-disciplined, you know. Before you would say, I want to be conscious of what I eat. It's like you're making a choice. Mm -hmm. You're deciding that you want to be conscious of what you eat just so you can have optimum nutrition, good health and well-being. But yeah, there are also people who don't also care. We like to buy the watches, that's by the gutters, you know, because... For some that's, reason, that's <laughs> yeah, exactly, mm. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it's important to observe really and to be keen on what you take in, because, like I said, yeah, what you eat, right? So I mean, now we have shifted from so many trends of then we used to have a lot of diseases, like we know malaria and those things. Mm -hmm. We know that they are caused by some parasites and mm -hmm. other things. Now, it is what we eat that cause most of the illnesses and the diseases we battle lately. Of, I mean, then times or some decades ago, it used to be the diseases of the affluent. You know? yeah. We think that it was the rich people. But now even Ghanaians who are, I would not say poor, but I mean, lower middle income country, but we also have a lot of those diseases upcoming. So it's yes. important to watch what you eat, you know, so that you don't eat and go and pay money. <laughs> to cure yourself. To cure yourself, yeah. I mean, I mean, I, I personally am eating well now, mm -hmm. but I think it's just basically because um, I'm working out. I'm a okay. workout freak now, so I care about the proteins I eat. I eat a lot of proteins, vegetables and fruits and all that. And I also have a friend who used to say that, oh, God, you have a white palate. I don't. I know she doesn't eat certain things because um, she says it's not good for her and all that. So I want to understand something. Are certain foods meant for certain people? Why is it that all foods are not recommended for everybody? I mean, again, like I said, food is food. So why is it that someone like Godwin will eat maybe, let's say, certain kinds of protein, certain kinds of carbohydrates, and this pers person B cannot take such foods? Yeah, I think basically what I would say is that we are different people, no? No two people can be the same, even twins. So when it comes to how your body reacts to certain things, there are a few things that differ. So first of all, maybe depends on your blood group, depends on your age, right. depends even on your sex. Okay. Sometimes genetics also play a role. Mm. Yeah, those all those are factors that can trigger the kind of things you should take in. For instance, I've studied myself, I mean, maybe because I'm a nutritionist, because then I know that, okay, if I take in um, animal-based milk, mm -hmm. like, um, I don't want to mention brands, so maybe let me leave it here. <laughs> yes, yeah, so if I take in animal-based milk, it, I react to it. So 
for some time now, I've stopped and I just stick to plants. Plants, plant these, based. like the almond milk, you know, the oat milk, the oat milk, soya bean milk. And exactly, all that. yeah. They're expensive, oh, my dear. <laughs> yeah, they're they very are. Expensive. But you can so actually expensive. make some of them at home, like soya bean. A, a milk. milk. You can make it and at home. And oats milk too. I've heard you can make it at you home can. as well. You can. You can. It's just, I mean, having the time, you know, making that conscious effort. And lately, there are a lot of videos on YouTube that you can make the use of. It doesn't because... Oats milk and, <laughs> because and cow they add, Have you had cow milk? <laughs> <laughs> because they add certain additives, yeah. you know, when they finish. They add all the vanilla flavors and those things. But if you make it at home, you may not add those things, which actually makes it more Better safer and, and nutritious. And healthier. Yeah. And healthier. I mean, you deal with people. So tell me, what are some of the common challenges that have come to you in terms of um, practices, the way people eat their food? What, what are some of the challenges they face? What, you meant malaria was back then, like you said, but mm -hmm. malaria has nothing to do with food. There was a very mm -hmm. interesting thing. Someone told me that they had malaria through food. I was like, how do you get malaria? Your food. So tell me um, some of the challenges, the common challenges. I know cholera. cholera. Mm -hmm. I always call, is it cholera or cholera? <laughs> cholera. Cholera. Cholera yes. is, is, is one of them. There's also um, typhoid. Typhoid, right. What, what are some of the common challenges that have come to you? Yeah, I think. Among Ghanaians. Yeah. So um, earlier on, I was speaking about, let's say, non communicable diseases, which is like the trend of the day. So we see a lot of young people, even children, getting obese. So those are like the major challenges that come around. A lot of people are becoming hypertensive. We used to think that it is when you are go, growing old, then maybe issues become. But now we have people as young as 12 years having hypertension. And you wonder what's hypertension wrong from with food? them. From not from eat? food. Okay. Not from food. But I mean, hypertension can also be linked to food, right? If it contains a lot of sodium. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like salt. salt. Let me just yeah. So, yeah. I get it. Yeah. Yeah, but because it's food safety day, mm -hmm. maybe we should focus more on the cholera, on the typhoid, and on all diarrhea. those things. Diarrhea. You realize that when COVID came, we used to have a lot of issues on cholera, diarrhea, mm -hmm. and typhoid. But when COVID came, those incidents reduced because we advocated for washing of hands all the time. And a lot of times, what caused most of these cholera and typhoid is that people just go to the washroom, they don't wash their hands effectively, and they feel that, oh, I only entered there to pee, mm -hmm. so there's mm -hmm. no point. And they come back and they jump on that plantain chips, you know. Your hands, I mean, the things that would cause some of these cholera and typhoid, they are microorganisms, right? They are pathogenic, very tiny animals that cannot be seen by the naked eye. So the only thing you can do to help yourself is to make sure that you wash your hands very often. Mm. And then you practice good hygiene. Mm -hmm. If you are at your homes, you make sure that the places where you find your food, you need to keep that place very clean. I mean, tidy all the time. Keep all those napkins and everything clean. Don't leave the food open. I mean, we, we always advise that don't eat too hot and too cold food, but keep it lukewarm. But that doesn't mean that when you pick that food when you are coming to eat, you just leave it open from a You know, that kind of thing, you know? Yeah, I mean, those are the petty, petty things. Fly settles on the food, and to think of even street food, especially in Accra. Yes, I was coming that's to that. That's like, yeah, that's like a major thing. And, and, and most people... Um, rely on street food. Yeah. Most Ghanaians rely mm -hmm. on street food for their daily upkeep. Not everybody can cook at home and all yeah. that. But you would recommend that people would rather make the food at home, right? Yeah, two things. Okay. So if you have the chance to make your food at home, it's the best. Okay. But if you can't and you want to purchase something, especially the street food, now there are several things that comes in when we are talking about food safety. We have the WHO guidelines, like five key principles that us. you need to follow, right? So we, first of all, we say that keep safe, you know, keep clean. Make sure that whatever you are doing, whatever, like it has to do with food, it has to be clean and all of that. You need to keep raw food from cooked food so that you don't have that fresh meat by the banana you are eating. Mm. And then you are coming to cook the meat, all right, but it's not yet cooked. So then there's that cross-contamination. Maybe the the meat was frozen. So once it dissolves and the water gets into the bananas, you come and eat it. It's not going to help you, right? And then beyond that also, we have the time and temperature zones. So if you are buying that street food out there, 
one, you don't know when it was prepared. You, you don't even have control over that, right? And then let's say you are buying something like meat pie. No, when you take it out, at, I mean, when they, let's say they prepare it even this morning, mm -hmm. they come and keep it in the sun for only God knows how long. Definitely, there, there, there's going to be some temperature change from the time it's, it was prepared, you know. And all that time, the microbes are developing. All that, because they put meat and other veggies in it. It's not so healthy. Okay. It's not so healthy. But if you want to buy those things, always make sure that you get them very hot, like fresh. You have to ensure that it's hot and then you're eating it. Then beyond that, you need to ensure that you use clean and safe water and also clean materials. And that's also another thing we can't control when we are buying from outside. Because you go and buy that wache, you go and buy that kinky, you don't know the kind of water they use. That's what I want to just pray to God. <laughs> just, just thank God, pray over it because you can't do anything about yeah. it. Are there things you need to look out for when you're buying something on the street? Definitely. Do you, do you need to look out for? Definitely. Apart from, of course, if it's not by the gutter, what else should I look out for? Yeah. So if you're going to buy something by the street, personally, I mean, and with the knowledge I have in nutrition, I think mostly what I look out for is content. Okay. Right? If I'm going to buy something, I'm very curious. Even if it's malt that I take every day and I know that it's I know packaged. what it has, I still mm -hmm. check. Okay. Because a lot of people don't even check whether the thing is expired. Right. You are sitting in that car and they are selling Coke, Mami Fanta White. You don't even check if it's expired or not. And when you take that, it would lead you into okay. some acute foodborne illness. And depending on your system, it can even generate, you know, and become something else. So you need to really be careful. Check on the content. That's why there's a reason they put them there. It's not there to just decorate. Fine, packaging is good, but beyond that, you need to check. No seller will come and tell you that. Take your time and read the content to know because they are in to make money, mm -hmm. right? So they would convince you to buy without probably checking that. You need to also check the labeling and all of that. I see of late, even so below now, a lot of them package it and then they put the um, they put some. Um, best before, like best before is a bit different from say expiry date. When is best before, let's say best before 5th of June, then it means that after 5th of June you can still take it, but you may not have the taste right. as it would have been maybe right. on the 4th of June, right. but you can still have it. Yeah, so you need to check out for all those things when you are buying street food. And beyond that, the environment at which you are buying the food from is also important. important. Maybe the person cooks the wache by the gutter, but they would bring it to a clean environment and sell. You have not seen. At least what you, you don't see would not kill you, but definitely there's some. But you go there and then you see that there are flies all over the food. I mean, just advise yourself. And then, you know, you because you might be buying Thai for it anyway. Someone said that the nutrients are in the fly. That's where, <laughs> that's where it, it, the, 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 the juice is. Um, so, again, when mm. you get to... I mean, we can't control, like you said, certain things. For instance, a typical Ghanaian market, mm -hmm. not everyone can go to the supermarkets and the sure. malls to buy your food. Um, typically, we'll go to the Domi market or mm -hmm, the Medina mm -hmm, market mm -hmm. and all that. And usually these places, they are not sure. so clean. So what do you do as an average person, as let's say uh, a middle income earner, you know, you can go to, or even, you know, the low income earners, you yeah. can't go to the supermarkets and all that. When you go to the market, what do you look out for and what do you do to the food when you buy them? Yeah, so I think what I can advise as to what you buy out there is to, I mean, when you go to the big markets like the Medina and the other places you mentioned, after you've got your stuff, try and take everything home and wash, wash them, them thoroughly. Okay. I mean, wash them thoroughly. Sometimes you recommend that you add some salted water when you're washing the fruits and the vegetables, you know, just so you make sure that you are killing a bit of the microorganisms that you would have brought from the market. Salt water? Yeah. Just salt water, okay. Yeah. I mean, it's good, eh? vinegar, but it's not everybody, but salt, you can easily just dilute that at your home and then you use to wash your stuff, yeah, so. We mostly recommend that, but if you can afford, of course, you can go in for the vinegar. So most importantly, you need to make sure that whatever you bring home, you wash them thoroughly and you keep them safe in your fridge. Now, a lot of people try like to mix, they put the fruits and they put the meat and everything in one compartment of the fridge. 
I mean, most of the fridges and freezers we have, have the labelings on them. You see that they put the veggies somewhere. You see that they put the meat somewhere. It is important. You know, it is a food safety measure. That's mm. why they put all those things there. So you try to keep, because if, if the, let's say the freezer, the temperature is normally around one to say five, then that means that you are keeping your meat at a safe temperature zone. But if you go and put bananas up there, or the freezer. Yeah. What if you want to use it for a smoothie later? <laughs> for smoothies, you have to freeze your bananas, no? Yes, but then if that if you are going to use it for smoothie, then it means that you are just keeping it there for a short while and yes. you are using it. But it's not healthy. You shouldn't to put it together keep... with. Uh, no, 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 no. It's that's that's cross products. contamination that I mentioned earlier. Hey. Yeah. Pressure. <laughs> there with because the fridge is small. <laughs> the freezer is small. You put everything in there. Yeah. So you, the other thing is, the other thing has to do with like food waste. Mm, if your exactly. fridge is small, mm -hmm. you try to buy what you can accommodate. Maybe in one week, and then you can go back to purchase fresh things. I'm guilty of this. <laughs> Yeah. And you know that even makes you eat a lot of fresh food, you know, right. you don't store the food for a long period of time and all of that. And that's in a way, you're helping yourself prevent some foodborne illnesses. Because I feel like nobody should fall sick of food, I mean, food, from eating food mm -hmm. or die out of that. And a lot of people die out of yeah, 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 foodborne illness. Yeah. yeah, a thousand people die annually yeah. based on that. Um, what's, sorry, what's the best way to handle leftover food? Leftover. Because the leftover, they will eat it. Oh, yeah, I, I equally we'll eat, eat leftover food there. Eh? Mm. I do a lot. But for leftover food, what I can advise is that, let's say, well, if you finish preparing that soup, you know already the quantity you are going to consume in the night. Whatever is left, just try and package it nicely. Maybe sometimes you are cooking for the whole week, right? So you label them nicely. Maybe this is tomato stew, this is um, garden egg, wherever, in some nice... Um, bowls, you cover them and then you put it in the fridge and you only leave out what you can consume. Don't leave it in the saucepan and say, oh, the next day I'll put it in the fridge. When you do that and you leave the stew there, definitely microbes will develop again. Ah, so you can't just warm it and put it down? <laughs> That's what I learned growing up. You heat the soup and then uh -huh. you put it down. You open it small. Let's... Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's a way of um, preserving the food all right. But, but depends how long you are going to keep it. You can't be heating, reheating for, for one week. Right. You just keep it, no. Then you are also not just adding microbes, but also the nutrition, the nutrients content in the food will also reduce. Because take it that you have, you've prepared some vegetables, mm. right? And you, you keep heating them. Mm. I mean, by the time maybe you just be eating some chaff, not any um, nutrients or micronutrients you are going to get from the veggies. Those of us who didn't grow up in the kitchen, we are learning <laughs> how to preserve our food. But uh, is there any more advice you have for us as we wrap up this conversation? Yeah, so I think um, what I would say is that as we are celebrating World Food Safety Day, I think this year the theme is food standards saves lives, mm -hmm. right? So there's a reason why FDA, Ghana Standard Authority, and all those regula regulatory bodies ensure that our food meets a certain standard. It is up to you. Whoever you are, you have a role to play. I have a role to play as a nutritionist. You have a role to play. The lay person has a role to play. You need to take um, your food safety into your hands, you know, so that you ensure that whenever you are going to buy something, you read the content, and not just read the content, check the environment. And beyond that, make sure you wash your foodstuffs thoroughly. Mm and avoid cross-contamination, which is like a major thing that most households, you know, and try to reduce food waste and losses. I'm going to reduce food waste. <laughs> Having said that, I'm going to go to my favorite restaurant here in East Legon <laughs> and have some lunch. I'm in Bissa Selina yeah. Aganda. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. How do we follow you? Are you on social media? Mm. We have questions. Selina Wimbissa. On social media. On all social media platforms and... Yeah. Yeah, you can always reach out to me via WhatsApp. Do you advise anybody at all to have a nutritionist to help them when it comes to It's the... so important, okay. actually. And I always say that, you know, we, we are like, if, if you understand nutrition from the basics, then so, a lot of the problems we are having in this world would have been reduced. Someone like me. Mm -hmm. What do you advise? Last question before we go. Because I know it affects me. Okro, pepper, mm -hmm. milk, mm -hmm. 
contemporary, I know the foods that affect me. Okay. Do I stop eating them? Because it's not like I'm eat, I'm having them under unhygienic conditions. Okay. Very hygienic. I can take care of my food. But they affect my stomach. Does that mean that they're not good for me? It depends how they affect your stomach. If it is that, <laughs> all, my, all my answers are like to wear. If it is that any time you eat, like you've studied consistently, mm. and that each time you have this food, you get some form of reaction. It might not be the okra. Remember, okra is not just okra. The ingredients you add to the okra. It could be that you added some spices to the okra that, that is, is causing mm. you, but not necessarily the okra, right? It could be that um, uh, maybe there's so much pepper and you cannot control well, the milk. that. Milk yeah. Is milk. yeah, I mean, that's for the milk. We, like I mentioned earlier, right, individual differences. Some people are lactose intolerant. Okay. And so if you, once you figure out that it's not so good for you, there are several Other options ways. you can I, explore I the plant's milk as well. Well, Mr. thank you again. Very Most much. welcome. We hope that you have taken something from this conversation. You're still watching the AM Club on MX24 TV, World Food Safety Day. Make sure you take care of your food today. There's more on the show. Stay.